very blessed day, everyone. Greetings to you in the name of the Father, the Creator, the Most High, Allah, Yah, yod het Vahuhet, Elohim, God in our modern day name, and in the name of the Lord Thoth, Melchizedek, Yehovah. This is Neophyte D.A.G. bringing you another message. King George II of England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Germany, and the ruddy people, kings, queens, and leaders in Europe and North America were black. And in this message, we always start with Job 9 verse 24, which tells us the earth, which is America, will be given and put into the hands of the wicked and the wicked, which are the red Esau and the red horse, will cover all the faces of the judges, which are the leaders, the prophets, and the rulers of the children of Israel. And they shall not know who they are, so they shall be whitewashed by these red beings who have aligned themselves with the wild man, which are the Caucasians. So let's move on. We also focus on Testament of Asher, which tells us that we, the children of Israel, shall be scattered. We were increasingly disobedient to the words, the laws, and the covenant of the Most High and the Lord. So we were repeatedly warned that you shall be scattered and you shall be delivered into the hands of your enemies. But we didn't take it very seriously and we didn't pay much attention to the things that we were doing that was going to make us be scattered in the hands of the Gentiles. But it did happen because we were increasingly and thoroughly disobedient, irreligious, and corrupted ourselves with all kind of evil things that we took on that the Gentiles brought to us. We brought it to ourselves as well because we attached ourselves to the red horse and Esau. So we were scattered among the Gentiles and we did not know what lands we came from, what tribes we belonged to, and what language we spoke, either in North America, where you were indigenous, and Europe, in which you were also indigenous. Now we go to Proverbs 21, verse 16, which happened as a result of our disobedience and us being scattered. A man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain dead, and that's what we were over these many years, dead to the understanding of yourself, who you are, the laws, the covenant, and the contract that you had made with the Most High and the Lord. They were all dead, and you withdrew yourself away from knowledge, which brought in Hosea, which says, my people are perished and are in bondage because of lack of knowledge. They did not move to knowledge and understanding. Therefore, I did not move to them. You got to move to knowledge, people. That's how the Most High and the Lord will move to you. See, he knowledge over all the other things that you're seeking right now. Second Ezra 10 verse 30 also kicked in. And I lay as one that had been dead and my understanding was taken from me. So that's what we were and that's what we were under during the time of our academic frauders running around because they know we were in a fallen state at that time. And they know that we weren't approaching the time limit in which we were going to be scattered. And so they took full advantage of making sure they deliberately deceive, plagiarize, fabricate, tamper evidence, and suppress unwanted data that was going to free us before the time. And they stole our identity. Your entire identity was stolen. And on top of the academic fraud, menticide kicked in. Systematic and intentional undermining of a person's 
conscious thought because they knew you were consciously now, but you were subconsciously dead, which is the spirit. So the conscious mind, they took it and they brainwashed that mind. The subconscious mind, which connects back to your soul and your spirit, they know they couldn't touch that. But one day, the Most High and the Lord promised they will wake up the subconscious mind and destroy all the academic fraud and the menticide that we were under. So welcome to the life of no menticide, no academic frauders. We don't need you to validate anything. We'll find that information ourselves. King George II of the Hanover line of kings and queens of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, 1727 to 1760. He was also electorate of Germany because that's the German line that's ruling the England line of people. But they were also of the English descendancy because they are the family closely related to King James, the Stuart line of family. It's just a cross between the Stuart and the Georges, but they're still one of the same people. Don't be fooled by any of what you're reading. Otherwise, King George, he was born in Germany of the Hanover and the Stuart line of family. They combined those two families in order to prevent England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and Germany to become Roman Catholics. They wanted to maintain the Protestant religion. So they brought in the Germans to rule England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales so they wouldn't convert to Roman Catholic. He's the great, great grandson of Black King James, the first and the sixth. His father was a black man, King George the first. I've covered that message. Go to that message and you'll see King George I, he's a black man as well. His mother, Sophia Dorothea of Selle, she was a Huguenot, a black woman. All the Huguenots are black people. You might see a whole bunch of Huguenot words in the United States of America, and you're thinking it's Caucasian, Gentiles. No, it's not. These are all dark-skinned people, but they're of the French line, and they're called Huguenots. He banished and deported the last of the Jacobite rebel to Antigua and the Martinique. That's what he was responsible for doing. He was fighting with the King James line who wanted to take back the throne and convert England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales to Roman Catholic. And he said, no way, no way. He banished them all, tried them, convicted them, hanged some of them, and the rest of them he sent to the Martinique and Antigua. Others went to the United States of America. Others went to Jamaica. Others went to St. Kitts. They're all over the Caribbean and the United States of America. These dark-skinned people from England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, they were all banished as part of the Jacobite Rebellion. This is the line of the George family. They're all dark-skinned people, black people, all the way up until the mid-1800s when they started to mix with the Saxton Cockburns. That's when the line started to change over to Caucasian. That didn't occur until after, after Queen Victoria. After her time, then it started to mix even more. But Queen Victoria was a black woman. Don't be fooled by any pictures that they throw in front of you. The research has been done. The menticide is over and the academic frauders have received their retirement paper. We don't need your frauds anymore. King George I, that's the father of George II. George's skin in this book, George I, Elector and King, Ragnall Hatton, page 172, George I, skin, sunburned, no, it's not sunburned, the man is a black man, he's so dark, you could pass him off for a Spaniard, so when you hear all the Spaniard, all the Spaniards discovering America, North America, South America, and the Caribbean. They were dark-skinned people. That's discovering these lands. No Gentiles come into play until the late 
1800s. Be not fooled. We're here to set things straight. Dark-skinned man. In his mother's own words, he could pass as a Spaniard. He was so dark. That's his father. Still not convinced. His father again. The love of an uncrowned queen. Sophia Dorothea by W.H. Wilkins. Page 19 of that book. He was what? Dark. Dark gentleman of Germany. George Louis. The father of George II. Clearly dark-skinned man, a black man. Let's move to another book, The Royal Discord, The Family of George II, Veronica Baker Smith, page 19 of that book. George I, a small man with what? A dark skin, a dark skin. He could easily pass for a Spaniard. He was a dark-skinned man. No, he was not a Caucasian. As all the pictures that you have seen on Google, no matter how many crayons you use to cover up the face of the leaders, you cannot get them the color you want it to be because the facts will catch up with you because the truth will catch up with the lies. Let's move on. Sophia Dorothea, she's the daughter of a French Huguenot mother, a French Huguenot, a French Huguenot mother. Let's hear what Mr. Rutledge of South Carolina by Richard Barry has to say about Huguenots. A swarthy man, that's clearly a Huguenot. What's swarthy? Dark complexion. So any dark complexion, French person is a Huguenot. Not a Caucasian man, not a pale-skinned man, no, a swarthy complexion man, a woman is clearly a Huguenot if they're from the French ancestry. Yes, no doubt about it. Let's move on. Let's validate it. The love of an uncrowned queen, Sophia Dorothea, W.H. Wilkins again, page 54 of that book. Sophia Dorothea, she was a brunette. That's not talking about her hair because the hair they explain later on. That's the trickery during the menticide phase and the academic frauders have inserted in book. Let's go to Webster Dictionary, 1828. Brunette, brown, that's what brunette means. It's a German word, brun. For brown, brunette, a woman with a brown or dark complexion. That's what it means. She was a brown or dark complexion woman. No mistake about that. A French woman, that's why she's a huggernaut. Huggernaut, a what? Swarthy, dark complexion. Match up, tit for tat. Let's move on. The captive princess, Sophia Dorothea of Selle by Paul Morand. Chapter 12 of that book, George the First, George the First, he never hated anyone but his mother, his wife, and his son George the Second. He liked them not. He especially didn't like George the Second because he thinks the son had more of Sophia Dorothea dark complexion, so he didn't like it. Unquestionable, the king saw Sophia Dorothea in his son, for the child had her complexion, whatever complexion she has, the child had. Sophia Dorothea was a brunette, dark complexion woman, so her son had to be dark complexion. Let's validate it. Let's go to the books and validate it. Now we run into the tricky word, ruddy. King George II, written by Charles Trench. We go to that book. Page six and page seven, George Augustus, which is his name for George II, known as the Electoral Prince with a ruddy complexion. What is ruddy, we might ask. I have 1828 Webster Dictionary lined up for you. Ruddy of a red color or of a bright yellow color. He's a ruddy red or a ruddy yellow. But it doesn't stop there. Doesn't stop there. I'll give you examples of other words they are going to throw in at you during the menticide phase, during the academic fraud phase, to disguise who your people are. Sanguine is another word they come up with of a reddish brown color, which covers ruddy red. That's what sanguine is, color of dry blood. They also throw in at you florid, 
during that time, which is bright in color, lively red color, which match back with ruddy red. But on the right hand side of the screen, so you're not confused anymore. I've given you visuals of ruddy at the top, ruddy red. Reddish complexion, reddish hair, reddish complexion, reddish hair, ruddy gold, a light-skinned man with a reddish color here. That's the ruddy people that they're talking about, but they come back to dark skin, melanated people, black people in our modern day time when they start switching around all kind of different titles and all kind of different social status. Royal Discord, the family of George II, Veronica Baker, page 49 of that book, George II, he comes back again. He was what? Ruddy. They keep repeating that word because we didn't know what ruddy meant at that time and we didn't dig deeper, but now we're digging in. Can't give us ruddy anymore and we skip over it. Ruddy complexion, that's what we got right here, but it was told to us whatever color Sophia Dorothea has. King George II is going to have the same color. So we know he's a dark-skinned brown man. We know that is. And we can match the ruddy with the right color. He's a ruddy red, not a ruddy yellow. Let's move on. Queen in waiting, Jean Pledy. We're going to talk about Caroline of Ansbach. That's the wife of King George II. Page 156 of that book. Caroline, her colored complexion, a dark-skinned woman married to a dark-skinned man, having dark-skinned kids. We're going to cover that soon. Now we go to his mistress. George II was a woman's man, and he made it known to his wife, Caroline, that he had other women. Page 78 of that book, George is wooing of a young married woman. Amelia Walmoden. She was dark and pretty. Dark and pretty. And he was madly in love with her. And he kept his wife informed that he was madly in love with her. But Amelia was dark. You know, his mistress is a dark skinned woman, not a Caucasian woman. If you're gonna look on Google trying to find pictures of these people, same book we're on. Same book. Now we go to his children. Page 36 of that book, his daughter Caroline was dark. We go to page 92 of that book, his daughter Mary was tall and dark. All dark-skinned kids that he had, no Gentile kids, no Caucasian kids, regardless of how many times they paid them Gentile Caucasian. We go to page 118. We go to page 118 of that book. His daughter Louisa, who married a king of Denmark and Norway. Louisa, a slim, sparkling brunette. But we covered brunettes ready. So you can't trick us with brunette anymore. A woman with brown or dark complexion. So we know his daughter Louisa was a dark-skinned woman. Can't trick us anymore. Conclusion. Without a doubt, King George II, the Hanover and Stuart line, King of England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and Germany was a black man. King George II's father, King George I, was a black man. King George's mother, Sophia Dorothea of Sele, a French Huguenot, was a black woman. King George's wife, Caroline of Ansbach, Germany and Prussia, was a black woman. King George's children were all black. Now it moves us to the ruddy people and the ruddy Jacobite that King George banished and deported to Antigua and Martinique were black people, not all Gentiles Caucasian, as you have been misled to believe during the academic fraud time and the menticide time. We go to the Jacobite gleanings from the state manuscript of England. Short sketches of Jacobites transportation in 1745 by J. Macbeth Forbes. Page 48 of that book, page 49 of that book tells you an exact list 
and description of the 150 rebel prisoners that were shipped from Liverpool, Liverpool to the islands of Antigua and the Martinique, June 30th, 1747. No mistake who these people are. They wrote the list down and they gave it to you. End all confusion as to who is being shipped. And what I have done, I have underlined only the ruddy ones in brown. I have underlined only the ruddy one in their brown color that were shipped as part of the Jacobite Rebellion, 1747. After the rebellion was smashed by King George II, he shipped them off. This is one of the shipment. Only one of the shipment to the Caribbean that was accounted for. Many others went to North America and Jamaica and other countries within the Caribbean, Barbados and St. Kitts. But look to see if you see any ruddy Caucasian. A gentleman came on and made a comment as long as a thesis paper telling me that Oliver Cromwell, even though he was ruddy, was a Caucasian man. Ruddy meant just his cheeks being ruddy, that he has rosacea or something of the sort. Madness on top of madness. We don't need any of your advice, oh Gentiles. The Most High told us your time is up, so we don't need your advice. Don't you know, O oh children of Israel, that you are the one who are to preach unto the Gentile? Don't you know I've taken away the fullness of my gospel from the Gentiles? Don't you know that? It's your time, O oh children of Israel. I shall move that spirit of slumber that I have put on you. Your time is done. Now it's your time for you to seek knowledge and to get that knowledge. And I shall open your grave and wake you up from the dead. And you shall know who you are in the place where you were being held captive. Ruddy man. List number three. Brown complexion. Well made ruddy. Isn't that what it says? List number four, Alex Katana, black ruddy man. Isn't that what it says? List number five, brown ruddy man, Douglas Campbell. Isn't that what it says? Isn't that what it says? Item number 21, Will McLeod. He's a black ruddy. I don't see any ruddy Gentiles. I don't see any ruddy pale skin here. I've underlined the pale skin one in red so you can see that there's no ruddy next to them. None at all. All the ruddies are brown or black. Number 44, John Stewart is from the King James family. If his last name is Stewart, he's from the King James line and the King James clan. What is he? Brown, well made and ruddy. He's not no Gentile or no Caucasian. No way. No way. No way is. Mary Kennedy, 58. She's brown and ruddy, brown and ruddy. 60, Eliza Farlin, black and ruddy. The pale is there, no ruddy next to it. No ruddy next to it. That's why I'm taking the time now to walk you through ruddy. This list we're gonna cover in another message in more detail. This is the other part of the list that make up the 150 people that were transported to Antigua and the Martinique. So my people in Antigua, you're from royal lines of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales that was banished to that country. My people in Jamaica, my people in Virginia, my people in the Carolinas, you were from these royal lines of stewards that were banished from England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Number 99, dark and ruddy. All there. Number 132, George Hume from Edinburgh, a black man. They had to identify him very well. He's a black man, suitable for the West Indies. That's what they wrote. He went to Martinique or Antigua. They're all there right now. During our academic fraud menticide stage, they're telling us all these Caucasian people were shipped to the Caribbean. Where are they in these big numbers that were shipped? 
back then that they're claiming. Where are they now in the Caribbean? The typical explanation is they intermarry. Didn't they intermarry in America as well? Wouldn't that be the case? Wouldn't they disappear and come all black in America? No, that did not happen because they were not shipped as they were thinking in those big numbers in the Caribbean and America. It was dark skin melanated people. And we're going to prove that out to you right now. Who are these ruddy, AKA black people, kings and queens and leaders in Europe and America? They came from Europe and they landed in America as well. Let's talk about Ruddy so you know fully what we're talking about. Adam, the original man, the original root race man, believed to be red because of his Ruddy complexion. So Adam was a Ruddy man. He was red, a ruddy red, and he transformed into a copper color brown in our modern day races. Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, it's kindred sciences. That's where that definition came out for Adam, but we're not going to stop there. Let's move on. Again, the examples of ruddy to refresh your mental visual of what ruddy is Ruddy red, ruddy gold, because ruddy can be of a red color and of a bright yellow color. So there's no mistake as we move forward. Adam and the Pre-Adamites by Dr. M. Doriel. Adam, that is referenced in the book of Genesis, was not, I repeat, was not the father of the entire human race, as you've been told by your Christian religion, but it's not. But he was the father of one distinct group of people, I say, one line of people, I tell you, with certain racial characteristics. Comes down to race, my people. One characteristic, Adam was the father of what we call the Semitic people. And now they give you another Caucasian Gentile running around impersonating the Semitic people, calling themselves Jew, but they are Jewish. They just adopted that custom, but they're not the root race. And I'll explain that to you. Revelation 2 and Revelation 3, call them out and tell you they're gonna find out who the true Semites are. Adam or Adama was a generic term and it meant not one man, not one man, not one man, but a race of men which were reddish in color, reddish in color. That's how we come up with ruddy red. Over his life cycle, he has metamorphed, he has changed his complexion from mixing. And in the modern races now, he's the brown race. Adam has transformed over into the brown copper color race, which was derived from that original root race. The red root race, the brown race derived from it. Make no mistake, when you're hearing the word ruddy, it's talking about the red complexion people who have transformed their color into the brown race of people. No mistake about it. Let's look at the Semitic while we're at it. We won't spend too much time on the Semitic, but the races of Europe, a sociological study by William Z. Ripley, PhD. This information is locked up in the MIT and Columbia University. They know what I'm telling you. It's no mystery. But it was kept from you during the academic fraud stage and the menticide stage when we were dead. Page 394 of that book. The English Jew are slightly lighter than the Sephardic Jews, which are very dark. When you see peculiar dark, they're very dark, the Sephardic Jews. 
So the Jews are dark-skinned people, and some of them are lighter as you get up to England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. That's how you get the ruddy gold. Semites are dark people. Semites are dark people. And the evidence that they are dark are in the sacred books. Bear out that same thing that I'm telling you, the same original thing I'm telling you, that they were dark. All the evidence is pointing to that. What else the evidence is pointing to? Therefore, they have to be black. They have to be black. Science prove it that they were black. People have shown another message giving you the scientific evidence. The popular impression that modern day Jews are what? Brunette. Can't trick us with brunette anymore because I've already given you the meaning of brunette. Dark complexion people, brown people. So it's known that the Semites are dark skinned people. So when we go back here, Adam was a Semitic people, was the dark skinned people. Not done with them as yet, we're not done. Slavery as it relates to the Negro or African race based on the Holy Scripture, page 16 of that book. Adam signifying red or copper color. Red or the brown race. Thus, this Jewish historian, he's Jewish. He's part of the Ashkenaz version of Jewish. This Jewish historian, as well as geniuses, know all of this information. Geniuses of the Hebrew language. That's your language, my people. They are taken over as their own, but it's yours. Furnishes us with a clue. They're given all kind of clue, leading to the right conclusion. <laughs> leading to the right conclusion that Adam were the red or copper color people. I'm not here joking around, people. Time for you to wake up to who you are and move to the knowledge of the Most High. Seek ye knowledge and knowledge will be given unto you. Walk to the Most High and the Lord so they can walk with you. Can't stand still no more. Things are moving. Wake up to who you are. You are the Adamites. You are the Shemites, the red and copper color people. Some of you came from Europe, enslaved your brothers and sisters in North America, and then you were turned upon by the Gentiles and enslaved and mixed in with your brothers and sisters that you were enslaving. And you all were put in one category. Black people or Negroes are colored in 1924. Songs of Solomon 5 verse 10, beloved is white and ruddy. I will explain white to you another day, but don't think it's your complexion. Has nothing to do with your complexion. I'll show you that in a few. I am black, but I am calmly. So you can't say Solomon was white and ruddy because he told you in the first verse what color he was. I am black, but I'm calmly. Pleasing in appearance. I'm good to look at. I am a very pretty man. I'm black and I'm pretty. That's what he's telling you in Songs of Solomon 1, verse 5. But these are all the references of ruddy in your Bible. But we'll spend some time on Songs of Solomon 5, verse 10. White, as in Songs of Solomon 5, verse 10, is telling you, is not white complexion. White was created as a social status in North America. No one talked about being white. Because white in the scriptural sense means you're purified from sin and you're sanctified. That's what white means. My beloved, I am free of sin and I am of black red complexion. That's who I am. That's what Solomon was saying. Let's move on. Songs of Solomon 1 verse 6 in case you missed it the first time. He repeated again, look not upon me because I am black, because the sun has looked upon me, and have been blackened by the energy, the melanated energy coming from the sun. I am full of melanin. Let's move on to your leaders because that's what I'm here to prove to you that all these painted over images are people of color. We go to King Henry the Eighth. 
Dictionary of National Biography talks about Henry. Henry's tall, thickness form, large limbs, and what? Ruddy face. His face is ruddy. So if his face is ruddy, the rest of his body is ruddy. Ruddy red, ruddy gold. That's what King Henry VIII look like. A ruddy man, so they can't fool us with ruddy no more. That's why I took the time to explain ruddy to you. So when we go through these messages, I don't have to keep repeating who they really are. This is King Henry VIII, a black man. The picture that they weren't able to whitewash as yet. Now that's King Henry VIII. Does that look like a white-skinned man? Or a Caucasian skin man? Or does it look like a black man? That's King Henry VIII. He's the father of Queen Elizabeth. The first Queen Elizabeth that they keep telling you is a Caucasian person. No, she's not. Let's go to the life of Elizabeth I by Alison Ware. Elizabeth, she had a what? A swarthy <laughs> olive complexion. Swarthy means dark skin. Olive, what does olive mean? Olive Aster, darkly brown. She's a dark brown woman. Her father was a black man. Evidently, she's going to come out as a black woman. No Gentiles out there have told us. No Gentiles out there have told us. Sir Francis Jake. John Sugden talks about Queen Elizabeth again. Drake, who met Queen Elizabeth privately, he found her a woman of what? Olive complexion. We just covered olive. Darkly brown, corroborating the first evidence I showed you. We jumped to King James Stewart. We jumped to King James Stewart. That's why I read for you the Songs of Solomon, which says he's white and he's ruddy. Because this author, when we were blinded, when we were in our dead state, tried to confuse us as to what King James and what complexion King James had. Memoirs of the court of King James I by Lucy Aiken, page 403 of that book. At the bottom it says, Solomon complexion was white and ruddy. So was King James. <laughs> so we know Solomon was purified of sin and he was a black man. But we didn't match it up at the time when Lucy was putting out this academic fraud. So we weren't able to figure it out. But now we know he's white because he's purified from sin and sanctified. And he's ruddy of a ruddy red or a bright yellow color. Not a Caucasian person. No way at all. King James the Sixth and the First. King James the Sixth and the First by David Harris Wilson. Page 168 of that book, an Italian observer noticed King James' color that it was blonde. Oh my, why don't they just say he's a ruddy yellow or he's a light-skinned man? Confusion on top of confusion to lead you off the scent until different when you got back your senses. Blonde, he's a bright yellow color, he's a ruddy yellow. Further down in that same page, another person who saw him, Arthur Wilson, an historian, wrote, King James was of a ruddy complexion. So if he has a blonde color and he's of a ruddy complexion, it gets him into ruddy yellow, as I've shown you what a ruddy yellow person look like. Can't be fooled anymore. Memoirs of the Court of King James. Talked about King James again, giving you another description, further confusing you, telling you he's fair and florid. That's why I gave you the florid description, that it's a reddish color. Fair doesn't mean that he's a Caucasian. It means he's free and clear of smallpox that was hitting everybody at that time of King James' line of families. Smallpox was a big outbreak and everyone was getting it. So if you didn't have smallpox, you fell right into, right into definition one. Clear, free from spot, complexion. That's why he's fair and florid. Florid is his true complexion. Fear is just a description. He's of a ruddy red, they're telling you. Moving on. Moving on, Alan Massey, the Royal Stuarts, page 114 of that book. 
It tells you this man looked like a steward king. Tall and dark, all the steward kings have that feature. They're a dark-skinned people. Dark skin can't be fooled no more. That time is done. Wake up, my people. This is King James' picture I'm showing you from a book that he wrote himself, putting a picture of himself in his own book. The works of the Most High and the mighty Prince James by the grace of God, King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, the defender of the faith, giving you his own picture. Dark-skinned man, this is not a Caucasian man. Not convinced? Let's go to his other picture of himself being displayed in the National Portrait Gallery of the United Kingdom. The original Jacobite, the original Jacobus. King James, does that look like a Caucasian man to you? Does it? I am asking you, no more. We're asleep, we're wide awake. Cromwell now, we get to Cromwell, because a lot of people have gotten into this uproar that I'm saying Cromwell is a black man. When he's not, he's supposed to be Caucasian to let the story stick that he was deporting other Caucasian people to America and the Caribbean. If the glove don't fit, it won't fit. I can't make it fit when it doesn't fit. Cromwell's ruddy complexion, Cromwell's ruddy complexion has written in Cromwell the Lord Protector by Antonio Frazier. Cromwell's ruddy complexion, if the shoes don't fit, I can't put it on his foot. He's not a gentle man, he's a ruddy man. He's also described as sanguine. What did I tell you about sanguine earlier? Of a reddish brown color. Can't fit it, 231 of that book. Cromwell was hideously ugly. He had a big copper nose. I put a copper over there so you see what copper looks like. And a sanguine comes back to the same thing. A dried blood complexion. The man is not Caucasian. The man is not a Gentile deporting other Gentiles to the Caribbean and North America. It's a black man deporting other black people to North America and the Caribbean. And there were some sprinkles of Caucasian in it, but the main body of people that he was moving from one location, scattering from one location, were other people of color, other black people. Still not convinced about Cromwell. We're gonna go further. Cromwell, the Lord Protector, Antonio Fraser. Same book, page 577. Someone else who saw Cromwell. Ruddy face with a big nose. That's how they described him. They described him as sanguine. Again, people who actually saw him, not people coming up with all kind of self-made idea. Don't rely on your own self-conceit, oh my Gentile. The only thing you have to rely on, the only thing you can rely on these days is the Holy Spirit to guide you in truth. Be not deceived by your own self-conceit. A man who relies on his own self-conceit, a woman who relies on her own self-conceit as a fool for an instructor, Repeat that to yourself when you try to rely on your own self-conceit. He was a ruddy man. We identified ruddy as a black man. He was a sanguine man. We identified sanguine as a black man. Still not convinced? Let's move on some more. Oliver Cromwell by Peter Gone. He left a picture that came close to the complexion of what Cromwell was really. Page 125 of that book. Cromwell! by those who worked with him. Sir Philip Warwick worked with him and recalled what Cromwell looked like. His countenance was reddish, not rosacea-ish. Reddish in his sanguine complexion, a brown color complexion. That was Cromwell. He can't be Gentiles. The shoes doesn't fit. You can't put it on his foot. You have to come with the evidence. If you're going to convince the children of Israel, you got to come with receipts on top of receipts. Charles I by A.E. MacKilliam, page 139 of that book. Cromwell entered Parliament at the beginning of Charles I's reign. He was the one who started that whole Jacobite conflict. He beheaded Charles I 
and that triggered the Jacobite conflict in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. And that lasted from the 1600, from the mid 1600 to 1745, almost a hundred years of war between the Jacobites and whoever was ruling England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales at that time. But let's move on. Cromwell, his complexion was muddy and sallow. How can a Gentile man, how can a Caucasian man have a muddy complexion when mud means dark? How can he have a sallow complexion when sallow means yellowish, dark yellow? The man is a ruddy brown, not a Caucasian. Charles I has studied by Walter Phelps Dodge, page 48 of that book. Cromwell, his face was swollen and what? Dark. The man was a dark-skinned man. Let's not hallucinate anymore that he's a Gentile, a Caucasian. The shoes won't fit. Got to throw out that shoes. No more menticide. No more academic fraud. That can't work no more. Moving on. Dictionary of National Biographer. We're going to go to Queen Anne, which was one of the descendants of King James, because they have her as ruddy as well in this book. Queen Anne is described by small a, has her complexion ruddy, but we can't be fooled by ruddy anymore. How many ruddy people have we ran into and they turn out to be black? How many so far? And the list just started. Let's move on. Lady Queen Anne by Margaret Hodges, page 206 of that book. Abel Boyer gave a clinical description of Anne. Her complexion, sanguine and ruddy. Mistake? No! She was a brown-skinned woman. Sanguine and ruddy come back to the same thing. Moving on, Queen Anne. Cambridge under Queen Anne, page 368 of that book, edited by J.E.B. Mayor. We saw the Queen. She was copper color. The Queen was copper color. She was a black woman. The shoes don't fit on her as well. We got to throw that shoes out. She is not Caucasian. Now we move to America. Because I have to prove to you that it was happening in Europe and in North America where people were being classified as ruddy during the time of our academic frauds and our mental side, our brainwash. And we didn't think a second that they were being deceptive to us. Black Colonel George Washington of the colonial states of America versus black King George III of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Let's move in. Martha Washington, First Lady of Liberty by Helen Bryan, page 85 of that book. George, he was Ruddy complexion. George Washington, he was ruddy complexion. We already know what ruddy is. He's a black man. Let's move on. Mary and Martha, the mother and the wife of George Washington by Benson J. Lossing, page 105 of that book. Washington, his complexion was florid. Good thing we had that prerequisite where we describe what florid is so we can't be fooled now. He's a ruddy red complexion. That's what they're telling you. He's a dark-skinned man in our modern day time. Let's move on. Washington, George Washington, a biography by John R. Alden, page 11 of that book. A British officer who met Washington had reported that he was what? What was he again? Dark complexion. That was Washington. He was a black man. People, come on. People, come on. You got to take off those blindfolds and know what's going on around you. Those forces of red. Esau and the Red Horse, which is the Luciferic beings in high places, low fourth, second dimension, running games on us. But the time is done. The most I told you, the blindfolds are off. George Washington, a black man, 
a black complexion man. Let's prove it out. George Washington, a biography by Douglas Southall Freeman, page 239 of that book. Van Horn, description of George Washington, was a tall, dark man, a dark officer of the American army. The only officer in any way that answered the description of Van Horn was Colonel George Washington. He was a dark-skinned man. He was no Caucasian man. He was not a Gentile. It's all a lie, my people. It's all a lie. Page 240 of that book, London asked Kennedy for a description of the Virginian. Kennedy said... Washington said the captain was a black complexion man. He was a black man. Time to end the foolishness. George Washington was a person of color. Why can't you find any of his family now? Why can't you have any of his family showing up in all these celebration, bicentennial celebration? Because they're black people that have been mixed in as Negroes colored and black after the 1924 Racial Integrity Act. They lost their status as white social status. They became black and mixed in when the Gentiles took over. Let's move on. King George III, who was fighting with George Washington of America. This book of King George III by John Brooke. Page 288 of that book, King George, the most prominent feature of his face was what? A large nose, thick lip, and his ruddy complexion. Man, what a way everyone who's ruddy end up turning to be black. Is it a coincidence? No. It's consistently using that word to bypass Telling you that the man was a black man. He was a person of color. He was a dark-skinned man. So they used the word ruddy to disguise it. But now the blindfolds are off. The Most High has woken up the spirit of truth among his people. Let's move on. A royal experiment. The private life of King George III by Janice Hadlow. Page 120 of that book. George is sanguine complexion. We already covered sanguine, so you can't fool us with sanguine. Comes back to Ruddy again. Reddish brown complexion. That's sanguine. That's George III, the King of England. George III, a biography by J.C. Long. Page 66 of that book. George III, he had a thick lip corroborating what we just read, his father Frederick was dark complexion with what a Moorish appearance. The man was a black man, that's his father. That's his father Frederick was a black man. Obviously his son is going to be a black man as well, but his son had a high yellow color, high coloring. He was a light skinned black man, that's George on page 67 of that book. Dark-skinned people being kings and queens, England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, and the new, the new country in North America, the United States of America, also another black man as the leader. Beethoven, as I know him, because they didn't only restrict it to leaders, everyone who is of color, who was doing great things in England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, all of Western Europe, and in the United States of America. They whitewashed them all. So you think every single one of them is a Gentile, a Caucasian person. But I'm here to tell you, no, it is not so. Beethoven, as I knew him, a biography by Anton Felix Schindler, page 454 of that book, Beethoven, his complexion was what? Ruddy. That's the trick word at that time, which disguised everything that you were reading, giving you another meaning. Just as our brunette is used to reference a dark-skinned woman, 
Ruddy was used to reference a dark-skinned man. Sometimes they use Ruddy interchangeably for a woman, but predominantly it's used for men, black men, to disguise their complexion. They give you Ruddy hoping during the time when we were on the mental side, when we were spiritually dead, we would not research what Ruddy is. Time is up on that. Beethoven, a biography of a genius by George Marek. Page 49 of that book. Beethoven, he was described as what? Dark brown complexion. He was so dark brown, he was described as a Spaniard. Just like the Georges, when you're dark, that dark, they say you are Spaniard. Because all the people from Spain and Portugal at that time were dark-skinned people. That's what I'm here to tell you, and that's what is going to be told to you over and over and over until you get it. Beethoven, A Critical Biography by Vincent Dindy, page four of that book. The Beethoven family. They're from Netherlands. They're from Antwerp. They're all over Europe. Page five of that book. They were dark brown complexion. That's the complexion that Beethoven had. His parents were dark complexion. He was dark complexion too. And that earned him the nickname, the sobriquet, the Spaniards, the way he was so dark. Black people can't be any clearer, can't be any clearer, which moves us to the American Civil War, which moves us to the American Civil War. Black President Abraham Lincoln of the United States versus Black Confederate leader Robert E. Lee of the Confederate States of America. If you're Gentile, if you're Caucasian, and you're in the South, click off right now because you're not going to like the rest of this message. It's not going to be pleasing to you. Let's jump in. Abraham Lincoln made statements in his own words, in his own autobiography. That's locked up in the Library of Congress telling you who he is. If any person require a description, a personal description of me, and they thought it desirable to know it, he said, I am a dark complexion man with coarse black hair, with nappy hair. He's telling you he's a black man with nappy hair. In his own words, locked up in the Library of Congress. Not telling you anything that's not known. Not telling you anything new. It's been there, but it was hidden from us because we were blinded. Letters and telegram. Letters and telegrams of Abraham Lincoln. He had his letters and his telegram put together in a book format. Page 119 of that book. Page 120 of that book. Talks about Abraham Talking to people, writing them a letter. Do you remember that long black fella? That was me, Abraham Lincoln said. I was that fella. Do you remember that long black fella? That was me, Abraham Lincoln said. Moving on, Abraham Lincoln by Benjamin P. Thomas. Chapter 7 of that book, Echoes of the National Conflict. Lincoln, page 131, his skin was what? Dark, and his hair was unruly. His hair was nappy, his hair was nappy. He had coarse hair, not the straight hair, as you see in all these pictures, and the Caucasian complexion, as you see in all these pictures. He was a dark man, just as how you see in this picture. A black man, just as how you see in this picture. Moving on. Moving on, the story life of Lincoln by Wayne Whipple, page 43 of that book. Abe was now in his 15th year. His complexion was what? Very swarthy. We covered swarthy already, so the job is already done. We know it's a dark-skinned man. We need not go any further. He's a black man. Walt Whitman, Walt Whitman, a biography by Milton Meltzer, page 92 of that book. 
Walt said he saw the great Abraham Lincoln. Walt said he had a great view of Lincoln. Walt said he had a view of Lincoln. His dark brown complexion. He's a black man. Page 108 of that book. Walt often come across Lincoln and wrote of this account. I see very plainly Abraham Lincoln dark brown face. Make no mistake, Lincoln is not a Caucasian man. Lincoln was a black man running United States of America. They were all black people running it from George Washington time all the way up to Abe Lincoln time, all the way up to the mid 1800. That's what I'm here to tell you. Prove me wrong if you can. Moving on. Moving on, black president, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Dear Mr. Lincoln, letters to the president, edited by Harold Holzer. Vile threats to the black nigger, vile threats to the black nigger, written by this angry southerner, February 14th, 1861. Abe Lincoln, you are nothing but a goddamn black nigger. That's what Mr. A.G. Fricks decided to write to Abe Lincoln in his anger that Lincoln was trying to free up the Negroes, which are still dark-skinned people that were indigenous to America. The other dark-skinned people that came from Europe enslaved them and didn't think it was necessary to free them from their slavery. Dark-skinned people enslaving dark-skinned people. And they were upset that Abe Lincoln decided to let the indigenous go. They decided to call him a black nigger. How can you call a Caucasian man a black nigger if he didn't have that complexion? Hey, he was a black man. This letter, never before published in its entirety, was discovered where? in the Chicago Historical Society. Your records, all your records in Europe and America, hidden in vaults and secret places, but the most High is gonna expose all that in the dark has to come to the light. You're no longer in control of suppressing data. You're no longer in control of putting out algorithm to hold that message from going out. The Most High is taking over. Now we move to Robert Lee. We move to Robert E. Lee. A Life of General Robert E. Lee by John Eston Cook. Page 346 of that book. What did it say? Read it for me before I read it. Read it for me before I read it. General Lee was what? General Lee was what? General Lee was ruddy. That's the Southern Confederate States leader. The Southern Confederate States leader was a ruddy man. He was a ruddy man. Don't let the Gentiles or Caucasian fool you anymore that it was white people controlling America. White was a social status developed by the dark-skinned people in America to prove that they were more purified, free of sin, than the indigenous dark-skinned people that were already living in America. They created a social status of it, purified versus unpurified. Not complexion until 1924 when the Gentiles, the Caucasian, moved in and took control of the United States of America. They made it into color. Change all your books, all your history, hit it in vaults and burn whatever they could so truth will be hidden until different when the most I say it's time to bring the truth out. Robert E. Lee, a portrait by Margaret Sanborn, page 389 of that book. Lee, as it says, Lee, Federal General George Forsyth, who saw Lee, who saw Robert E. Lee, wrote in his notebook, a clear ruddy complexion man. Ruddy yellow or ruddy red. That's what Robert E. Lee is. 
a ruddy man. Coincident, all these ruddy men turning up black? No, because they were black. That's the trick word that they would put there to this guy's complexion, just as how they put brunette to disguise the complexion of the women. But Lee, he was a ruddy man. Moving on, Robert E. Lee, a biography. Douglas Southall Freeman, volume one, page 98 of that book. Lieutenant Lee, ruddy complexion. Lieutenant Lee, ruddy complexion. Lieutenant Lee, ruddy complexion. Page 450 of that book, in appearance. One fellow traveler who saw Robert E. Lee, who saw General Lee, said he had what? A florid complexion. You remember that tricky word? The one that they used to substitute Roddy? Same meaning. Same thing. Robert E. Lee was a black man, as I told you, oh Gentiles, oh Caucasian, if you're from the South, click off, it's going to get worse. Click off, it's going to get worse if you don't want any truth today. Let's move on. Robert E. Lee, The Man and the Soldier, a pictorial biography by Philip Van Doren Stern, page 237 of that book, 237 of that book. Mistress Lee noted about her husband. She must know what her husband looked like and what complexion he had. She noted what he looked like. His complexion was florid. She said his complexion was florid, which is the same as ruddy red. That's what he looked like. That's what he looked like. That's what his complexion was. Mistake not. Consistent though. How many? How many receipts have you gotten about Robert Lee so far? All saying the same thing. How many receipts have you gotten so far about Ruddy, Sanguine, and Florid? All coming back to the same thing. A black man, a black woman. Robert E. Lee, the Southerner by Thomas Nelson Page. 274 of that book, General Lee, as I recall. That's what the protagonist is writing about General Lee. General Lee, as I recall him, he must be recalled by thousands of people and remember him as he is and stop lying to the people. But the lies won't work anymore. His florid complexion on page 275. His florid complexion. He was a black man. The earth, America, will be given into the hands of the wicked and they shall cover it. The face of the judges covereth the face of the leaders, covereth the face of the prophet, covereth the face of anyone doing anything important, which is of color. Robert E. Lee, a biography by Emery M. Thomas, chapter 6 of that book. I must get away from here. Lee was tall and what? Lee was tall and what? Lee, he was tall and dark. That's why I told you all Caucasian. Click off if you're from the South and you don't want truth. Click off if you're from the North and refuse to accept truth because all these people were dark-skinned people. Lee was tall and dark. He was a dark-skinned man, not a Caucasian man, not a Gentile man, none at all, none at all. Robert E. Lee, these are his true portrait. Robert E. Lee, these are his true portrait. General Robert E. Lee, his true portrait. Icon for a nation. A dark-skinned man. A black man. Does this man look like a Caucasian complexion man? I say, does this man look like a Caucasian complexion? Not at all. Not at all. That's what I'm here to tell you, that the deception is over. We know who these people are. We don't expect you to come forth and give the truth because the truth wasn't for you. It was for the people of Israel, those who want to accept truth and move into the plan of the Most High. Because the truth, as it says, shall set you free and let you know you're part of something bigger than what's going on right now. Next message, we shall cover the Black Stuart 
royal friends and family and acquaintances that were deported from England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales as part of the Jacobite Rebellion from 1649 to 1745. All the Jacobite Rebellion of all the dark-skinned people, of all the ruddy people, of all the swarthy people, of all the sanguine people, of all the florid people, all the brunette people that were moved out of Western Europe into United States of America, North America, and the Caribbean, Jamaica, Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Kitts, St. Christopher, Antigua, Martinique, all part of the Caribbean where they were spread out, scattered. Now it's time for the gathering and be part of the great exodus that's coming back to you. Stand strong, O oh children of Israel. Stand strong, stand strong, O oh children of Judah. Stand strong, stand strong, O oh children of Jacob. I say stand strong in the name of the Most High, Allah. Yah, Yod Het, Vahu Het, Elohim, you him, we him, God in our modern day name, and in the name of the Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Yehovah, praise be unto you always. You have woken up and started the gathering of your people. The time for the Exodus is near. Praise to you forever and forever, always. Mm -hmm.